I prefer this um, short example. You have, this is just a general year counter, 20x1 up until 20x5. So it's a five-year model that we're working with. And we've got this company that is modeled in the dollars millions. So quite a big company. It's making a billion dollars in year one, and that's growing steadily over time. And these are its costs. And it has, after you subtract all your costs for revenue, this is the amount of money that the firm has left over to pay its debt. We call this cash flow available for debt service or CFADS as an acronym that you'll hear very commonly um, in the debt space if you're involved in debt. Let's say that this firm has got senior debt. So it's got bonds, it's got amortizing facilities, and uh, the total interest and capital burden is given by this schedule. Let's assume that it's amortizing, so the interest burden goes down over time, but it's still repaying capital on senior debt. So let me just stop there. Senior debt is the debt that is paid first. It gets the first bite of the apple, if you will. So if you have a company that's got numerous debt facilities in place, you then in your legal agreements, you'd need to stipulate who gets paid first, who gets paid second, third, fourth, and so forth and so forth. So we call lenders that have the first claim to the cash flows senior lenders. You then have subordinated lenders, which only get paid if your senior lenders are paid in full. So in other words, if a senior lender needed to be paid $150 million in that year, but the company didn't generate sufficient cash in order to pay that $150 million, then your mezzanine lenders would not get paid at all because there, was, there would be a shortfall in the amount that was owed to the senior lenders, okay? So only if the senior lenders are repaid their full $150 million in interest and capital in that year, can the mezzanine lenders hope to get some interest or some capital payment after the senior lenders have been paid. So let's assume that we are now subordinated lenders. We're now lending a mezzanine facility, which is a facility that kind of behaves like debt, but it also has some characteristics of equity. So we have this mez or mezzanine facility. Uh, facility. And we have got uh, an opening balance. We've got our drawdowns. We have an interest expense. We have the interest that we're actually paid. And then we have something that's called a cash sweep. So typically for these mezzanine facilities, you don't have a contractual amortization profile, uh, meaning that there's no fixed schedule that tells you you have to pay $50 million in quarter one, another 10 million in quarter two. It's not contractual. You pay via a cash sweep. So the mezzanine, mezzanine lenders say whatever cash is left over in the business after you've serviced all the senior lenders, we're going to take a percentage of that cash to repay the debt. And that's what's called a cash sweep. And let's assume for this example that we will take a third of all the cash that's left over in the business to repay the capital on this mezzanine facility. And then we can then have a closing balance. So let's assume that this mezzanine facility was half a billion dollars. Okay. Uh, we started with zero and we drew down half a billion at the beginning of the year. Our interest, let's assume that it's reasonably priced, 15% uh, uh, rate of interest on this uh, mezzanine facility per annum. And so the interest that you incur during a given year will just simply be the amount that you've borrowed, the opening balance plus your drawdowns and you'd multiply that with the interest rate for the year. So that's the interest expense. Now, this mezzanine facility has got no default rights, so we'll get paid if there's money, basically. That's the situation here. So how do we model that? We can then say, we can put an if statement here, and we can say that if there's cash after senior debt, in other words, if this is a positive balance, we want to get paid um, the smaller of whatever interest is owed to us, okay, and what you have to pay. So the interest that is owed to us in this year is $75 million. But if you only have 20, we'll take the 20, okay? So to express that in the form of a formula, I'm going to use a min function. 
we're going to take the smaller of whatever cash you have available and whatever you owe us for the year. Okay. And I'm going to make that negative because that's money that is going to be flowing out of the organization. And I'm just going to drag that across. I will fix it. Next, we move on to this cash sweep. I'm going to apply similar logic for that cash sweep. I'm only going to sweep if there's money. If there's no money, I can't call default. There's nothing I can do. So I would say that if there's money after you service the interest, okay, if there's money left after you've serviced the senior debt and after you've paid us the interest, only if there's money left over, I want to take 33% of that money to repay the capital outstanding. Okay, so I will say, if there's money left over, I'll rather put that if it's positive, the money that's left over, then I will then take whatever money is left over, which is given by that result, and I'll take 33% of that money that is left over as my cash sweep. Okay. But now I also think of some possible scenarios. Okay. What happens in a year? where this cash sweep would exceed the amount of debt that is owed to us. I can't take more from this company than they owe me. So if they only owe me, for instance, $100 million, but the cash sweep says I'm entitled to $156 million, I can only take $100 million because that's what they owe me. So I need to cap this formula. Okay. So what I can then do is I can put another if statement there. I can say, if the value of my debt outstanding, which is simply your opening balance, um, your drawdowns, any interest incurred, and any shortfalls, I'm just going to include all of that. If the debt that I owe okay, is greater than the value of the actual cash sweep, and what is the cash sweep? It's just whatever I have in the business minus what I've already paid in interest. And I'm going to take 33% of that. Okay. So if the amount I owe is more than the value of the sweep, then I'm going to apply the sweep, which is what the remainder of that formula in the brackets is. However, if the amount I owe is less than that, in other words, if this if statement is false, I'm only going to sweep the amount that I owe, okay, or the amount that is owed to me if I'm the lender. And the amount that is owed to me is just simply opening balance, drawdown, interest expense, and the actual interest paid. Okay. Um, and that is the if statement that explains my cash sweep. I'll just drag that across. My closing balance will just be the sum of everything that's happened in that year. And then my opening balance will just be the closing balance of the previous year and drag that across. I can drag that across. OK, and uh, interest expense, drag that across as well. OK. So what I find is that with a cash sweep, I will repay this facility in year three. But if you look at this formula, Wow, it's got some nested ifs there. And if you were to look at this formula like this, it's pretty complex. Something even worse happens if you're trying to calculate royalty payments in the mining industry. You have a lot of nested if statements because they're different levels of royalties depending on how well the company is doing. So there must be another way to do this. Let's see if we can make it a bit more efficient. I'm going to... Just change the way I calculate these lines here. Okay. The interest expense. My interest expense, I know I can only take a maximum amount. Um, okay, so the interest expense is just what it was before. It's just going to be 15%. Uh, let's just do that quick. 15% of whatever was outstanding, so that's fine. The actual interest that I pay is limited by how much cash is in this business. So I can't take more than the cash that is in the business. It's the, if the business has no money, 
I get zero interest paid. So instead of using an if statement, I can just say the interest that's going to be paid to me is the smaller of whatever is owed to me and how much cash is actually in the business. Just a simple min function. Okay, I'm going to take the smaller of what's owed to me and what is in the business. If the business only had $10 million, I'd take the smaller of those two numbers and I can only take $10 million to pay my interest. So that's easy, a lot shorter than that formula with an if statement. I also need to protect myself to idiot proof the model. What happens if they have a year of negative cash flow? Okay, I can just simply prohibit this value from ever being a negative number by just putting in a max function, it's going to be the maximum of whatever that value is and zero. The max function just ensures that I'll never ever get a negative result here. So I can then drag that across. Okay. And then let's do the cache sweep again. And uh, let's use a similar reasoning. I know that the cache sweep is going to be the smaller of however, however much money is in the business and however much is owed to me as a lender. So I can use a min function again. The cash sweep is going to be the smaller of however much money is left in the business, which is the cash flow after senior debt. Subtract whatever you've already paid in interest. That's how much is left over. And then you sweep 33% of that. Okay. I'm going to take the smaller of that and the amount that is actually outstanding in debt. And the amount that is actually outstanding in debt is just the sum of your opening balance, your drawdowns, and the net interest for that period. Um, it would be zero if you managed to pay all the interest. Okay, And that is my formula there. And what I can then do is make it a negative number because that money is flowing out of the organization. Just compare that formula with the formula with the nested if statements. A lot more efficient. Again, I have to idiot proof the model. So I have to make sure that in a year where we have negative cash flow, you're sweeping zero. So I just put maximum of that result and zero. I can drag that across. And we have exactly the same result, but much more efficient. So if you are debugging a client's model, you hope and pray that the client has been efficient with their formulae so that if you have only a week to understand the model, you're looking at formulae like this as opposed to formulae that sometimes go for three lines with nested if statements. Okay.